Hey guys, what's up? It's Dredrick, and time for the long overdue video on Happy's Undead vs. Orc strategy. Uh, this is going to be how Happy plays his matchup vs. Orc as the standard style. So we're going to see from Happy this game, we'll go ahead and put the build order up on screen now, is a fast hero build where he gets the Death Knight out on the map very early on in order to get some uh, item creeping done and just generally be as productive as he can while still getting as fast of a tech as possible. The general idea of this strategy is you're going to do a very fast tier 3 tech and you're going to make a push on the orc at 50 food that's a triple threat. You're going to threaten the orc in three ways with this push because while you push the orc with a very good timing, you're also going to expand behind it and prepare to transition into your tier 3 unit composition, which is going to include banshees. That's right, there's been a lot of uh, development in the meta over the years. You never ever used to see undeads using spellcasters, but now you do. You see banshees used quite a bit, and occasionally now you can even see some necromancers. Stay tuned. We're not going to see any necromancers in this video, but coming up, we will be taking a look at some other undead caster strategies. However, back to the point, the general build order with this is you do Alter Ziggurat, so you can get your hero out on the map, which is very important on especially maps like Amazonia or Tanera Stand, which this is going to be, and you're going to take that Death Knight once he gets out, and he's going to be Superman. He's going to go do his own thing with some skeletons, with the Rod of Necromancy, and uh, you're going to wait until you get your Tier 2 started and you start making fiends back in your base behind that Tier 2 deck before you really transition into the next phase of the game. So, anyways, back to the game, taking a look at this. Um, nothing too special going on. The Happy actually randomed into Undead this game, but it doesn't really matter. The Orc strategy doesn't really change very much, so... Um, the orc already knows that he's undead. He has a scout coming in here, and he's just got this acolyte scout, which is going to be important. We're going to come back to this acolyte scout a little bit later, uh, but for now, we have the death knight out. Uh, graveyard going up in the base. He's going to tech uh, pretty soon here before he actually does anything with that, but the death knight picks up this rod of necromancy. You do not need dust uh, early on in this matchup. Um, if you're doing a fast hero, because you're not really going to be able to use the dust. Um, especially on this map, you're pretty much going to want to come into the middle and contest these two wizard camps. Uh, these are very high priority camps because they're very easy to kill these rogue wizards. Um, Happy's going to use two coils in this first camp. The first coil just to do damage, and the second coil to make sure that the blade master can't steal it. And then once that wizard's dead, he's going to grab these skeletons and he's going to go to the second one. Um, it's very common that you're going to find the orc is going to contest these. You'll end up kind of fighting over these camps with the blade master, which is fine. Um, you just kind of want to fight over that. Uh, but the important thing is that on this map, you usually are going to want to start the game with a fast death knight coming after these camps. We go look back at Happy's base. He started his tier two tech, and then he went uh, went ahead and got his second ziggurat here, completing his wall. You start your tech, and you get your second ziggurat. With the fast hero build, you already have three ghouls, so you don't need to worry about your lumber anytime soon. Meanwhile, after you start this uh, first ziggurat, you're going to want to start your first ziggurat before you start making Crypt Fiends. Then you'll be able to make two Crypt Fiends without any delay uh, on this Crypt afterwards because uh, you're not going to use them for a little while. And you can see why. Is Happy's actually going to go down here. This is what Happy likes to do. Is he likes to go try and steal his opponent's green down here. This camp actually drops very good items. Uh, you can see the Blade Master got, uh, I believe, a Circlet of Nobility from that item. Drops a level 2 permanent item, which is very good. Um, however, Happy didn't get one of those, so next what he's going to do, which he very often does, is he's going to go steal the Troll Priest from the expansion. Um, and you can see he got really good item, Pennant of Energies, fantastic item for most, uh, most races, Undead especially, really can utilize that item. But he's basically just item creeping the map, he doesn't really care about finishing these camps, he's not really worried about XP, he just isn't even level 2 yet, even though he's sort of crept 3 camps. Um, he's really mostly just going for the items. Blade Master's doing the same thing. He's going around. You can see he got three pretty good items too. He's got two circlets and a slippers of agility, all very good items for a Blade Master. And uh, that's how you want to open this matchup on a lot of maps. Tanera Stand is a prime example of a map that you want to open like this on. Uh, now that Happy has some fiends out, however, and he's kind of run out of steam, you see he ran out of his uh, skeleton rod charges, he's going to go ahead and come back to his base. Um, now, down here, Happy is killing off his scout acolyte. Why is he killing this off? Well, because he needs to be at 25 supply. He can't be at 26 supply because he does not have a ziggurat started. Uh, he's about to finish his tier 2 tech, and meanwhile, he's just going to start creeping with his uh, fiends at this point. He's going to be careful. Um, he makes three fiends before his tier 2 finishes. 
Uh, but once his tier two does finish, notice he only has five supply available. So what's he gonna do? Now, there's three things you need to do every game when you hit tier two. You need to make tier three, you need to make your hero, your second hero, and you need to make a slaughterhouse. In this game, what you want to do if you do fast tech is you need to go tier three first, slaughterhouse second, and lich third. And he's about to start his lich just as soon as he has supply for it, uh, or as he has the money for it. And here we go, lich should start, there we go. So the reason for this is simple. Uh, unlike if you start with a Crypt Graveyard build, your tech is already very fast. So even if you delay the Lich, you still have a very fast Lich, or at least your Lich is on time. It's about the time that you would expect your Lich to be. So what you need most importantly is tier three, because we're gonna need a try a tri hero. We need a third hero and that orb of corruption very fast. That's a big part of this strategy. Second of all, we need the slaughterhouse because we're going to do a push at tier three. And before we do that push, we need two uh, statues and the destroyer upgrade out. So if we delay this slaughterhouse until after we start the Lich, we're just not going to get the slaughterhouse in time to do what we need to do to make all three of those things. So we can afford to delay the Lich a little bit because at this point in the game, since we've teched so fast, the orc doesn't have any raiders out. Raiders and the shadow hunter are really the two main things that force you to make a Lich. Um, if you don't have Frost Armor and he gets Raiders out, you're going to have a bad time. But when you do a Fast Tech instead of doing a standard Fiend opening where you go Crypt Graveyard, uh, then you can afford to delay that Lich just a little bit because your opponent's not going to have those Raiders or that second hero that force you to have Frost Armor. And you can get away with going Tier 3 and Slaughterhouse before you start anything else. So it's okay. Um, meanwhile, back in his base, you can see he's starting this Slaughterhouse. Uh production of the obsidian statues and he's going to go ahead and get a fourth fiend this is where you want to get your fourth fiend but we're going to stop at four fiends for a while this is not a five fiend strategy it's a four fiend strategy and you'll see there's really just not money or supply to get those four fiends uh, now that he started his second statue he's going to go ahead and get this ziggurat uh, getting ready to 50 uh, go to 50 supply and he's also creeping out his expansion. Um, creeping out the expansion is a big part of the strategy. Once you've kind of got the Lich out and you've stabilized, you need to creep out your natural gold mine or at least a gold mine that you can expand to because we're going to be doing that uh, pretty soon. It's a pretty big part of what this strategy is. Meanwhile, he's hit tier three now. Uh, so what do we do with tier three? Well, the goal right now is we want to get destroyer upgrade Orb of Corruption, and Dark Ranger. That's what we're using our Tier 3 for in this game. Now, he can't get all that yet. He just doesn't have the money for it. So he's going to do two things. He's going to creep this camp in order to buy a little bit of time so he can get a little more money to get that Dark Ranger. Um, and he's also creeping this camp because you want to get 3-2 on your heroes. Uh, Happy's actually not going to get 3-2. Um, level 2 on the Lich, obviously, you have, so you have Frost Nova. And level 3 on the Death Knights, you have level 2 uh, Death Coil. Now, the reason he doesn't have level 3 on the Death Knight is just because of the map. Um, Tenera Stand is very item creeping heavy, so you get a little bit less experience. Um, and also because the Orc took this camp, so Happy wasn't able to get it. He's a little bit behind on XP in terms of where he might normally otherwise be. Um, but it's okay. Anyways, he's going to pick up his Dark Ranger and he's going to go for a push. However, let's pause right now because I mentioned at the beginning of this game that this strategy is a triple threat. So Happy's doing three things right now. One is he's making an Acolyte. Two is he's got this Dark Ranger. And three, what we're going to see in just a minute here, is he's going to go ahead and build da -da -da -da, a Temple of the Damned. So this is, in a nutshell, the strategy. You have a very good timing window here versus Orc, where you can do a, this really strong push with four Fiends, Tri Hero, and one Destroyer, which he will morph pretty shortly um as he goes in to do this push we'll just wait for him to go ahead and turn one of these into a destroyer uh yep right now and there we go so you've got this roughly 50 food push he's gonna go ahead and make this temple behind it and he's also gonna send this acolyte to make an expansion right now um so the whole point of this strategy is essentially that the orc has a timing window here where he's going tier three so he's getting his tech up. He's also getting a third hero eventually. He's going to want to get that Orb of Lightning, which we just saw he has. He was attacking the statue with it. 
He's trying to creep up his heroes, but all in all, the orc hasn't really got his, his strategy into full swing yet. Uh, the way that orcs play now is a little different than how they used to play, where they would just stay on tier 2 forever, harass you with a bunch of raiders and expand early, and it's a little bit of a different game now, uh, and this strategy works fantastically against it. Um, so this timing window works very well against standard orc play, and it allows for you to transition into your tier 3, so this temple will eventually start producing banshees, while expanding behind this push because the orc can't ignore you. He has to go deal with your push that's going on. Now, why did he build this destroyer? Uh, the destroyer has two purposes in this situation. The first is destroyer is good against uh, hex in particular. Um, however, you don't want to just make your statues into a destroyer. If you're playing, don't just make a destroyer right away for no reason. The reason he made this destroyer was because the blade master attacked a statue. Now, you can't coil a statue, and you can't really force the Blade Master to go away and leave your statue alone. You could put Frost Armor on the statue, but the orb is going to purge it eventually. The Orb of Lightning will purge that Frost Armor off. Uh, so the idea is you want to wait until a statue is under attack, and only then you turn it into a destroyer. That way you can coil it, you can protect it. Um, alternatively, if the Shadow Hunter comes in and hexes one of your units, then you want to turn one of your statues into a destroyer right away so you can dispel that hex. Unless one of those things happen, don't morph a statue and destroyer. Just let him stay as statues as long as you can get away with, essentially. But here we have the Blade Master chasing down this destroyer, but that's okay. The Death Knight will go ahead and protect it as it gets purged here. Not a big deal. Uh, however, it would be nice if the Blade Master was uh, getting debuffed by a level 2 Death Coil, if the Death Knight had hit level 3. Um, but he doesn't have that yet. That's okay. But let's check out this push. This push is super strong. We can see this uh, gold mine is about to turn into a haunted gold mine. Not quite there yet. Um, but this is a really fantastic timing. Right around nine minutes, just after nine minutes is usually when you're gonna hit with this and this your timing is really good on a smaller map. Ooh, excellent. Hits a uh, destroyer transformation there to uh, dodge the entangled. But that's the idea. Basically, you wanna morph these uh, statues and destroyers once they come under fire, once they're threatened. Before they're threatened, go ahead and let them be statues. Let them give you your health and uh, mana back. And now with Orb and Tri-Hero, Grunts and Raiders just absolutely melt to this. Uh, same thing with Berserkers or Headhunters, whatever he has. Um, it's really fantastic. And the important thing to remember, too, is you don't want to leave the Orc alone right now because as they start making Berserkers, once they get a bunch of these ranged units up, it's really hard to fight. If you just AFK and creep, um, you're going to have a bad time versus Orc. If you leave them alone and you don't pressure them, their Tier 3 army with Berserkers and Kodos and Grunt Raider and Tri-Hero is going to be really, really hard to fight. So you don't want to leave them alone. You do want to pressure them sometime around 9 to 10 minutes, or else it's going to be really, really tough for you to win this game. So Kodo Beast comes in here. Uh, Happy's really aggressive about killing off Kodo Beast, but, I mean, really, the Orc can't do anything about this push. If he lets you get this push and you get it off on time, um, it's going to go really well for you. You can see the expansion's going up back in his base. He's got this Temple of the Damned. He's getting ziggurats up. He's getting ready to break 50 supply because once he uh, has that expansion up, then you have the money to go ahead and break supply into low upkeep and you're not going to really be uh, stressed about the money. You'll have the money to go into low upkeep without too much pressure. But the game is really pretty much over at this point. Um, so it's a really strong push that is effective. You can win a lot of games just off this push with, with nothing else. But even if this push doesn't win the game, the important thing is you have a follow-up. In fact, you have two follow-ups. You have a transition into a stronger Tier 3 army where you'll break supply. You'll go up to 60, 70 food pretty soon. And you also have an expansion going up, which is up and running now. So, you know, uh, from the Orc perspective, this is really tough to deal with. It can feel... Uh, this can feel really imbalanced as an Orc player playing against this strategy. Um, and it works absolutely fantastic. So uh, I highly recommend for all the Undead players out there, if you're looking for a good, clean, standard way to play Undead versus Orc, this is the build you're looking for. This is the one that you want to be putting out there as your, your plan A. And there's other cool stuff to talk about. There's some other Undead versus Orc strategies that are kind of gaining some traction that I want to talk about soon. Um, but before I get to that, I just I want to talk about the standard. And I think right now this is the gold standard for undead versus orc. Um, since he's uh, gonna be morphing these statue destroyers, he does rally an obsidian statue to his army as one of these fiends dies. Um, that's a really good idea. You do wanna kinda send another statue's replacement. You can see that he went ahead and went to low upkeep because the expansion's already up and running, and he's gonna go ahead and uh, get ready to start producing banshees with um, one or two upgrades on those banshees, the adept or master training even. 
Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of places to go from here. This is just a good, solid way to open your Undead vs. Orcs. This gets the first 10 minutes of your game in a really good spot, and uh, Happy's gonna go ahead and win the game. So, um, the build order is in the description as well, if you just want to link to the image of the build order. Uh, as well as I'm gonna go ahead and put the replay. It's up on uh, Warcraft3.info, so I'll put a link to the replay uh, in the description if you just want to go ahead and take some time, slow down, and watch the replay uh, without necessarily my commentary in the background. So. Um, there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and uh, I will see you next time with some more cool undead action. So, uh, catch you later. <laughs>